wonderful. Amen. Will you join me in prayer? Glory, glory. Hallelujah. You reign now. Reign in me and reign in all these who have gathered to hear your word. We ask this all in the strong name of Jesus and all God's people say. Amen. Well, uh, some of you know that we were on vacation in Florida. And oftentimes people will say, so Todd, what do you do when you're in Florida? And I, I say, well, I go to the beach and I watch the tide roll in and I watch the tide roll out. That's vacation to me. Now, I'm going to tell you there's a little bit more to that tide rolling in stuff. Uh, I think there might be a picture that will help us explain a little bit more of what we do on vacation. Uh, we like the ocean. And I, I've tried, I, when I was a kid, I was very, very afraid of water. And so uh, my wife, bless her heart, has tried to introduce me to water. And thus, we've tried to get our boys to not only uh, like the water and be safe around the water, uh, but love it and enjoy it. So what we do, we do a little thing called wave smashing. And when they were we little boys, we'd go out and the water would come up to their knees and, and then they'd run back. And, and we do just little wave smashing. Well, now this year, we started to go out and the tide was rolling in and they liked it. And so we kept going until the waves were smashing over Thaddeus' head. And he kept saying, Daddy, let's keep going, let's keep going. <laughs> and so we went out until the waves were smashing over Elliot's head. And Thaddeus had stopped talking at that point, but Elliot kept saying, Daddy, keep going, keep going. And so we went out until one big wave <laughs> smashed over my head. And I said, boys, we are going back. <laughs> we are going back to the shore because I got swept away. And it was kind of scary. Because suddenly I found myself set adrift in an ocean with my children. And it was time to head back to shore. It was either time to head back to shore or have someone throw us a lifesaver. So I'm going to send around some lifesavers again. Uh, you may take one. If you feel like you really need a lifesaver, you may take two. Uh, do not try to put this lifesaver on. Do I have a catcher? Mayor? <laughs> you are a catcher. I'm just not much of a catcher. I'm just not much of a catcher. Do not attempt to catch this if it does not make it. And you don't, don't spring out over the bottom. Here you go. You know, sometimes uh, life can sort of get over our heads. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? How you, you're going through life and the water just keeps rising. It keeps rising. And sometimes you can find yourself over your head. Sometimes that can happen in church. Circumstances crash in. Situations smash in, and we can be set adrift. We can sort of wonder, whoa, 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 where are we? What are we doing? You know, I didn't realize that I would be replicating the sound of the ocean with, with like 150 people unwrapping a lifesaver, but it's the most interesting sound. It's like a shh, shh, shh. unintended side effect. Mark, just keep it up. Now, if it continues all the way through the sermon, I know you're playing with me. But for now, it's kind of appealing. It's kind of nice. Yeah, Rich, I see you there. Um, and you too. Sometimes we can get set adrift. And then it's time to come back to something solid. It's time to come back to, okay, why are we here? What are we doing? And so several years back, we tossed out a vision statement. That, that sort of captured what we're trying to be about, what we're trying to do as a church. 
and it's based on the text of Acts 2, 42 through 47. So now that you have that sticky lifesaver in your mouth, I'll invite you to open the Word of God to the book of Acts. It's the back half of your Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then Acts. The Apostle is the great connecting book of the New Testament. We're going to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. So you don't have to go too far in Acts. Um, if you forgot your Bible, if you got up this morning and you were like, oh my goodness, the sun. You just ran out of your house because you wanted to spend extra time with the sun. You forgot your Bible. Uh, we restocked at Easter. So there are some fresh U Bibles there. Those are not U Bibles. Uh, they are U Bibles. They are there for you. If you don't have a Bible of your very own that you can read and understand, we invite you to take that home. Uh, early Christmas present. Um, but we'd like to have you open up the Word of God so we can read it together. I can't even discern where the pages are turning because I still hear the camera. <laughs> but we're in Acts 242. Did you get there? All right, how many people right now are experiencing a mango lifesaver? Just raise your hand. If you, if you don't even know. Oh, well, you are. Those are my favorites. See, now I was in Florida. So I got you some tropical lifesavers. I didn't just get the standard issue. I, I care for you people. Sorry. Hey, okay, you put your hand down now. I know you're enjoying it. <laughs> tropical lifesavers. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Please feel free to follow along as I read these delightful verses about the church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You'll see the point. SMC, the place to be. S-A-B-E-D. S-A-B-E-D. What we're going to do is we're going to unpack those letters um, and attaching them to some significant words about what we are about. And so I'm going to give you the S first. S is for salvation. Salvation is receiving Jesus as Savior and Lord. Did you know that no other organization on the planet has what we have? You cannot go to Walmart, find one of those people with the blue vest on that says, can I help you? You cannot go to them and say, excuse me, Where's the salvation aisle? It's not there. You cannot go to McDonald's, look at the dollar menu, and say, where is the salvation here? You cannot go to Movies 10 in Worcester. You cannot get it from Netflix. No one is offering salvation except the Church of Jesus Christ. We have it, and people need it. Only the, the Church of Jesus Christ has been commissioned to go into the world and offer salvation. And so if you come to Smith Mennonite on a regular basis, you are going to hear me hit you with the ABCs. You're going to hear that you need to admit that you're a sinner. You're going to hear me say that your plan Going on your own and doing your own thing isn't going to get you to heaven. And in fact, if, if, you, if you have tried it on your own long enough, you know it's not working. That there's a sin problem in our lives and we need to admit it. But then, the great part is we need to believe that Jesus is who He said He is and that He came to take care of our sin problem. And if we believe that He is our Lord and our Savior, 
If we believe He is who the Bible says He is, we can have that sin problem taken care of. We can be forgiven. And we need to believe that in our hearts. In believing that we can be forgiven by Him, it opens the door that we can believe we can forgive each other. This is powerful stuff. In fact, it's so powerful that after that, I would ask you to see, commit your life to follow Him for the rest of your earthly days. I would never ask you for any more or any less than a simple commitment to follow Jesus Christ. I would ask you on a regular basis to enter into a relationship, or maybe you need to re-enter into that relationship with Jesus. We have had many people be baptized, and even more people recommit their lives to following Jesus. And it is my prayer that we will continue and even expand as the Spirit continues to move among us. Now, why should we have salvation be the first thing? Why will I be so fanatical about making sure that the S is always salvation? Let me tell you a little story. I went to a, a conference recently out of town. It was down by Cincinnati, and I had to stay at a hotel. And I took directions to the conference center from the hotel. But when I got up in the morning and I looked at my directions, they said, turn south. Now, for those of you who may not know, I am about as directionally challenged as anybody I know. Okay? And I pulled out that the, the conference center was two miles away, according to Matt Quest. But I pulled out the, the driveway, and I didn't know which way to turn. I can turn one of two ways. And I, you know, I'm looking at the sun, <laughs> east, west. And the initial turn I made was wrong. I had all these directions of how to get there, but the first turn I made was wrong. It took me down a road like three miles to a dead end. It led me nowhere. Okay, I'm like, what did I do? I, I took the first turn wrong. <clears throat> Friends, can I just tell you, if we try to do church without proclaiming Jesus as our Savior and Lord, First and foremost, if we don't get that right, everything we do after it will be wrong. Everything after that will lead us somewhere that we don't even need to go. And it's not going to take us where we want anyway. So that's why we're going to keep the S as number one. My question for application is very simple. Have you received Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Have you received Him? And are you in the process of recommitting your life every morning when you get up? Lord Jesus, I'm going to live for you today. Consider that as we move in to the A. The A stands for, oh, you know what? Oops. I'm going to back up because I forgot to read you verse 47b. But it's a good way to conclude. Verse 47b on the, on the first point. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We basically start with the last verse. We see that in the early church, daily, the numbers of being saved were being added. And that's a beautiful testament. But now we're going to jump into the next. Does anybody remember what the A stands for? Adventure. Adventure is stepping out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. The verse that illustrates this for us so wonderfully is verse 43. Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. For some reason, over the last uh, 2,000 years, churches have slowly been filled with yawns instead of awe. We have become a very boring and comfortable place. But I believe, as our fill-in-the-blank would say, adventure is stepping out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. I've often told the story of a kid named Jimmy uh, that I was having a spiritual conversation with. 
and asked him if he was ready to accept Christ. And he said, no, 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 there's too many exciting things I want to get done first. There's too, many, there's too much good stuff i got to get at, Todd, before I make that decision. I'll have time. Friends, Jesus is your ticket to adventure that we can't even imagine. Jesus will continually call us out of our comfort zone into the unknown and bring us a life of excitement that is hard to imagine. You see, this is where miraculous signs and wonders begin to happen. I'm going to tell you about just a little bit of miraculous stuff that happened just this last week. There were, there were four church members. That wasn't me, by the way. There were four church members in, in a van out, going out of state. They went out of state, got on the highway uh, many, many miles. And uh, after driving on the highway many, many miles, they arrived at their city of destination and were, were driving along, and all of a sudden uh, were, were to come to a stop, and their brakes went out. And instead of what could have been a catastrophic event on the highway, they bumped a car ahead of them. Just a bump. The person got out, said, Oh well, you know, your 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 license plate's a little crinkled, my car's fine. No problem, see. How often does that happen? Then on the weekend, they found a service station that would fix their brake lines on a Sunday. Drive home. Wonders and miraculous signs. A lady from our congregation this last week looked down at her hand and saw her, her diamond fell out of her uh, ring. Uh, this was not a big diamond, it was kind of a little tiny diamond, but those of you sisters who are here know that it's more about the rock, it's the sentiment, and stuff like that. And after some panic and some prayer later in the day, this lady was looking through a cooler full of ice and stuff. At the bottom of the cooler, there was a little tiny diamond stuck in the bottom. There, there are miracles, little miracles, big miracles happening all around us. And then as we enter into relationship with Jesus and He calls us, He's going to sprinkle our lives with this stuff. How are we conscious? Are we aware? that it's happening. A couple dozen of us uh, read the Bible through in 90 days. It was incredible. The insights and the learning that happened, but it was also hard and a little bit scary. It was out of our comfort zone. Several people have shown interest in going with me to Israel in January of 12. I don't know what you're hearing about stuff going on in Israel. But that's going to be way out of my comfort zone. If the Lord wills that we get over there. And that's what we're planning. My hope is that each one of you will continually be filled with awe in big ways and small ways. Because of the way God is working in your life. Application question. Have you been filled with awe lately? by what God is doing in you or around you. If you haven't been, maybe it's time to ask the Lord to start working in your life. Maybe it's time to start opening your eyes and your mind to say, Lord, what are you doing around me? What are you calling me to next? I want to do what you want me to do. I want to go where you want me to go. That's the A. Anybody know what the V is for? Volunteering. Volunteering is giving your time, talent, and treasure. Verses 44 and 45 illustrate this wonderfully. All believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. When we unpack some of the words, I would interpret together. They were together. What does that equal? That equals time. They spent time together. That's part of the treasure that you give. Well, you see, they had everything in common. I believe that's their talents. When they were together, hey, I, I, need, I need some help with this. Can you help me with this? Oh, do you have any extra this? 
hey, are you, are you good at that? It's so beautiful. And I just got a call recently from someone in our church who said, man, it's unbelievable the way people in this church help each other. When, when, when there's a need, people will call and say, hey, I've got this. There's something beautiful about when our talents can come together. Cars get fixed. Decks get built. Stuff gets done. And most of the time, I don't even know about it. I hear about it afterwards. But it's having our talents being volunteered and then treasured. They gave, they sold stuff. And they gave to anyone that had need. That would be how I would interpret treasure. If you don't get anything out of this sermon, I would simply like you to write down this off this point, and that is true satisfaction in life does not come from what you get, but what you give. True satisfaction in life does not come from what you get, but what you give. When I look at the way so many people volunteer here, it is absolutely incredible. Sunday school teachers, ushers, group leaders, adventure club leaders, MYF leaders, junior high, worship and song leaders, all of our AB people, the food committee, the trustees, the quizzers, the frisbee people, all of our committees that happen and function and do vital work. It's amazing how much stuff gets done by the volunteering of people and the spirit of volunteering that happens at SMC. When I look at our budget, I am amazed at the faithful giving of your treasure. And what a powerful witness that is in a world that is consumed with greed and materialism. And the way our finance people carefully steward and maintain our budget and watch over our giving. It is a powerful witness to the world that says, my money. And you come on Sundays and say, no, God's money. I recently heard giving is the only antidote for greed. So I thank you all for your faithful volunteering and the way so many of you do so much for building the kingdom. Now, for those of you who are new, don't be surprised if eventually you're going to be asked to chip in, help out, and be an active part of kingdom building here at SMC application. How do you need to volunteer? How do you need to find that true satisfaction in life through giving and through volunteering your time, talent, and trade here at SMC? Let me ask you what the E is for. <coughs> Equipping. Verse 42 tells us a little bit about that. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Equipping is being encouraged and empowered. Uh, straight up, I was at an equipping event about six years ago on evangelism where Paul Rohr pulled me aside and said, so Todd, what are you doing with your life? Where are you going with your future? And it was, it was part of the fruit of that conversation that led to a process that changed the course of my life. And so I've been pretty well hooked on equipping events ever since. Just because of the way I see the Spirit moving when we come together under biblical teaching and prayer, and suddenly the Spirit starts to move. To take in an event where you get encouraged and empowered by the Word and the witness of God and His people is so refreshing. <coughs> That's why you need to know twice a year. Uh, we make no bones about uh, promoting heavily a marriage retreat called the Weekend to Remember that we've had, we've had dozens of people go on, uh, where we focus on equipping our married folk uh, with marriage in the state that it is in our country and in our culture. 
I think it's such a wonderful thing when we can take married couples and have them encouraged and empowered to live godly, biblical lives in their marriage. And that's what we do on the weekend to remember. Then, coming up in August, we have the Leadership Summit. Again, we've had dozens of people who have gone, and many have gone again and again, year after year, because it's so good. The quality and usefulness of what we get there simply can't be found anywhere else. I, I truly hope that everyone will eventually be able to take in a leadership summit. But if you don't, there are still ways that you can be equipped right here at SMC for no cost whatsoever. How do you do it? We have incredible equipping ministries through our Sunday school and through our small groups. Have you ever wondered about creation issues? Have you ever, ever wondered where we came from? Origin, young earth, old earth, evolution, that type of thing? Answer the Academy. We have a Sunday school class meeting right over here. We're halfway through, but you can still jump in. Moreover, you can have it in your Sunday school class or your small group if you want it. Do you ever wonder about finances and how to do finances in a godly way? Or maybe you're in financial crisis. We've had Financial Peace University run through this church twice now. It's an incredible ministry. And maybe God is tapping you to step up and lead that again. Do you ever wonder how to win your friends and family to Christ? We ran through as a congregation the walk across the room curriculum. And frankly, I haven't found a better tool in teaching us as a people how to invite friends and family into a living relationship with Christ. That curriculum is available for any small group or Sunday school class that we want to run through it. Do you ever sit and wonder, man, how do I know God's will? There's a curriculum floating around amongst our small groups right now called the Power of a Whisper. And it's one of the most beautiful uh, curriculums I've ever seen on discerning God's will for your life. And it's available for you to be equipped. Uh, very soon I'm going to be starting up another membership class because what are we about? We sit down with the confession of faith and we go through it and we talk about what it means to be a Christian and what it means to be in the Mennonite church and how those two things come together so beautifully in our community. So that's what equipping is. Now, right close to that is the D. Does anyone remember what the D is for? Discipling. Very good. Very good. Discipling is doing life better together. Verse 46 and 47a really put the discipling piece together for us. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and witness for all people. Do you know, as a culture, we have more communication devices than any other time in our history. We have more ways of connecting than we ever have before. We spend billions of dollars on tools of communication that can put us together anytime. Some of you are texting even as we speak. <laughs> because you love those communication devices, but you need to know as you write that text, we are also one of the loneliest generations ever. We are one of the most relationship needy generations ever. We're rapidly becoming the most relationally inept because what we're slowly realizing is more information doesn't necessarily turn into better communication that doesn't ever bring us necessarily more intimate relationship. Now friends, I dig this stuff. I love the way we can communicate, the way I call my wife on the cell phone. She doesn't answer. Well, why is she answering? She's got her cell phone. <laughs> Back and forth. I love the fact that we are we are just like several hits away from having 20,000 views on our YouTube channel. That was great. 
It was great that people are, are tuning in and watching messages and watching us sing 606 and all that stuff. But you know what? None of that matters if those virtual relationships don't translate into vital relationships. Real relationships between real people. I dream of a church being lit up every day and every night with groups growing together. I dream of our eat-outs happening everywhere and people connecting with each other. Because in a very real way, I believe it's in those discipling relationships, those growing together relationships, that we actually experience the body of Christ in a very powerful way. How connected do you feel right now to the body of Christ? Are there five people in this room that you would say love? Are there five people in this room when there's a crisis call and they would actually come and help? How connected do you feel to the body of Christ? If you don't, can I encourage you to find ways? And if you're, if you're looking for a group, if you're cruising for a Sunday school class, or if you just feel like, man, I am totally disconnected, I want to invite you to, to let me know about it. And I'll do my best to find a place that you can fit in. And I, I'm so thankful there are so many of you who have been in Sunday school classes and small groups for so many years. You can read each other's minds. You know the menus of the restaurants that you go to by heart. It is beautiful. But that needs to be for everybody. Discipling is a team sport. And I'll invite you to date again today. Will you pray with me now? Lord Jesus, there are those here today who need to be saved. There are those here today who are sitting in our midst that have never accepted you as Lord and Savior. They don't know the forgiveness of sin. And so today, Lord, they need your salvation in a very real way. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would be moving now among us. And that someone who needs that commitment or recommitment will make that decision today. Because I know your spirit is moving. Lord, there are those here today who are bored, who are utterly tired of the same old, same old. That church has just become a routine. That there's no awe. That there's no wonder. Lord, would you open their eyes to the miracles that are happening? Would you invite them on an adventure that will light the fire in them to know that you are real? And that you have something for them to do. Lord, call us out of our comfort zones and into the unknown, wherever that may be. And Lord, there are those here today bursting with time and talent and treasure that you're calling them to share. Lord, would you help them to find ways of sharing it? But Lord, I know also there are people here who have shared their time and their talent and their treasure. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to give them strength and courage. I pray that you would continue to give them joy, even through the hard times of volunteering. Lord, help us to give, not until it hurts, but Lord, help us to continue to give until it feels good. Until your joy renews our spirits. Lord, there are those here today who feel utterly unequipped. From those who question the basics of the faith, all the way to those who are wrestling with deep spiritual questions. Oh, Lord Jesus, that we would be equipped. That you would help us to open our Bibles. That you would bring tools that we could as individuals know your truth 
and be set free, and then set others free. And in the midst of that, Lord, move into discipling relationships. Lord, there are those here who are lonely. Those here who ache for a human touch, a human heart. Lord, I pray that they would find you, that they would find the body of Christ surrounding them, even today, even sitting here, Lord, and that they would be invited into discipling relationship. Lord, I thank you for the way you have called us as a church to be all that you want us to be. Help us to be that through the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.